Hey Sopranos fans, welcome to another episode here on Bully Whispers, and we are here today to evaluate Law 18 of Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power, Do Not Build Fortresses to Protect Yourself, Isolation is Dangerous, in the TV show The Sopranos. Now normally when doing an episode, we will start by evaluating the bulk of the law and then end with its reversal. However, this time we will start with the reversal because it allows for a much smoother flow and easier explanation. So in this episode, we will evaluate Law 18 in The Sopranos by first looking at the potential benefits of temporary isolation and the pitfalls of its long-term use, as shown through Richie April, Tony B., Feech Lamana, and Vito, before moving on to a comparison between Phil Leotardo and Tony's leadership styles, which reveals Phil's biggest strategic error in the New York-New Jersey War, and end by referencing back to the Power Law 16 episode, specifically Tony's plan to make Christopher his number two, and evaluating that move according to Law 18 had he actually done it. According to Green, the biggest downside to the continual contact he advocates for through most of the chapter is that it doesn't allow time for thought, and in that capacity, temporary isolation can be useful. To support this assertion, Green points to how many great thinkers and writers have come out of the prison system, and while this may have some truth to it in real life, in The Sopranos, not so much. That is not something that can be said about any of the significant characters that we see come out of jail, although we can see the downsides of long-term isolation in all of them, in that they become disassociated with reality and lose sense of their own smallness, thinking themselves to be more significant than they are. With Richie, Tony B, and Feech all having trouble accepting Tony as boss and treating him accordingly, as well as Phil Leotardo almost instantly irritating Johnny Sack, they all seem to have gained delusions of grandeur without having any thought behind it, although none of them really seemed like they were big thinkers to begin with. Now to be fair, Richie did learn downward facing dog, Phil learned how to compromise, I wanted to fuck a woman, but I compromised. I jacked off in a tissue. No problem here. <laughs> and Tony B, who did have a high IQ, did actually seem to have a plan thought out, although not very well, for after his release. However, that was all forgotten quickly, which is something we will see again. The question then becomes, why didn't any of them use that time for any serious thought? And the answer may be found with Vito Spadafore and Dr. Melfi. When Vito was outed, he went on the run and settled into a small town. However, despite having plenty of time to think, Vito returned, and while his family may have played a part in that decision, Johnny Cakes hit the nail on the head when it comes to the real reason. It was the fucking life you couldn't live without. And Dr. Melfi explains perfectly why that may be the case. The individual craves almost ceaseless action, which enables them to avoid acknowledging the abhorrent things they do. They didn't think too much because they didn't want to think too much. Now it's important to note here that jail isn't the only temporary isolation characters in the show face. We also see temporary isolations for medical reasons, most notably Tony and Phil. When Tony came out of his coma after being shot by Junior, he seemingly did so with a new outlook on life, which he partially attributed to a near-death experience. However, the changes didn't last long. Nevertheless, when Tony visits Phil, Tony tries to convince him to have a similar change in outlook, hoping that Phil also had a near-death experience, and based on his response, he may very well have had one. And beholdeth the image of God. Turn that off. However, it wouldn't last long either, which brings us to the New York-New Jersey War. Qin Shi Huang was the first emperor of China and was the most powerful man of his day, but in the last years, very few if any people saw him. He moved in underground passageways, killed anyone who may have accidentally seen him, etc., and in the end he died suddenly away from his family. Now, obviously Phil was killed right in front of his family, so that's not the relevant parallel here. What is relevant is what occurred leading up to the Emperor's death. He had so successfully isolated himself that he had essentially transferred all of his power to the handful of eunuchs and ministers that he dealt with. When they ignored his orders, he never knew. They enacted laws under his name that he didn't know about, and it's believed that he may have been poisoned by those same people, who were also the people encouraging his isolation. Similarly, after Warhawk Butchie got his way over Albie and Phil decided to go to war, Phil goes into complete isolation and all communications start going through Butchie. From this point on, Butch is the boss. He can say Phil said things that he didn't, he can report back to Phil whatever he wants, and most importantly he is in a position to cost Phil his life, which he kinda does. The fact that he chose not to give the specific location doesn't toss out the power law dynamic at play. Instead, it actually provides an example of another aspect of Law 18, 
The Benefits of Interacting Unlike most of the other gangsters who avoid FBI agents like the plague, Tony will actually sit and talk to Agent Harris even though he doesn't like him, which is why he was able to gain an exact location. That being said, even if Tony didn't have that source, he still would have outlasted Phil because he stayed with his guys and Phil didn't. Remember, this isn't season 2 or 3 Tony that most people loved. This was the end of the series Tony that wasn't nearly as well liked, and even if he was, there is always someone who would sell you out to improve their own position. Both sides were losing lots of money due to this war, and both sides wanted it over, but Phil's absence made it much easier for New York to work behind his back to make it happen. Had he been there, that may not have been possible, in which case New York would have steamrolled New Jersey in the war and may have forced them to give up Tony. But why was Phil that hellbent on getting them at any cost to begin with? Well, the answer to that may lie in Power Law 18 as well. Now, while the death of his brother shouldn't be overlooked, Green notes that one of the potential side effects of long-term isolation is a tendency to hyper-focus on details while losing sight of the overall picture. That is exactly what it looks like happened here. Phil was angry over his brother, Fat Dom, etc., all of which could be considered decent reasons to pick a fight. However, even after some level of vengeance had been attained through the shootings of Syl and Bobby, Phil continued to focus solely on these details, completely ignoring the morale and income of the people under him. Had he been able to take a step back and look at the big picture, things would have probably played out much differently. Speaking of playing out much differently, this brings us to what may have happened had Tony actually moved Chris into the number two spot like he had planned. So, over the next couple of years, more and more, I'm going to be giving my orders through you. And then finally, only through you. Going back to Law 16, we know that the idea in general to pull back was a good one, However, even assuming Chris had no drug problem, Tony's idea of going only through him may have been taking it too far. This would have put Tony in a position similar to the first emperor of China, where Chris could essentially run things in spite of his orders, and once Chris had met everyone he needed to meet, Tony would have been expendable. It also would have made Tony arguably easier to set up for a hit, because all you would have to do is follow Chris. According to Green, one of the benefits of circulating is that it makes you a moving target, and moving targets are harder to hit. So while only going through Chris may reduce the potential number of snitches, it also opens Tony up to many more potential problems. Well, thanks for watching another episode here on Bully Whispers. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you at the next score.